We are prepared to make sure that the judgment is paid to New Yorkers. And yes, I look at 40 Wall Street each and every day. If he does not have funds uh, to pay off the judgment, uh, then we will seek, uh, you know, judgment enforcement mechanisms in court. And we will ask the judge to seize his assets. Okay, here we are. We'll ask the judge to seize his assets. I look at 40 Wall Street every day. The day that this all comes due is Monday. 40 Wall Street is one of his most valuable properties in New York at $270 million estimated. And you can go down all of the others that he owns uh, part of, uh, and you can see all the prices there. $160 million, $175, 500 uh, in part in some of these. So what happens now? I mean, do you just suddenly say, okay, couldn't get the bond, couldn't get the backing, the court doesn't go my way, so suddenly I'm selling a $500 million building in five days? Right, well, it, I mean, this is this is what the conundrum that he is in. If he does not post this by Monday, he can still appeal, of course. It's just that this verdict will be enforced immediately on Monday, as you just showed there with Tish James saying she's prepared to go to court and do this. Um, literally it, seize the it, building Exactly, asset. exactly. Start a new case to go after it. And she could do that in, in multiple states, too. It doesn't just have to be in New York where he has uh, properties. But, uh, I mean, the, the writing is on the wall that if he hasn't started preparing to sell some assets by now, that it could be pretty difficult to get this process done by Monday. And clearly, Letitia James is ready to go to, go to court. She's been preparing for this. All right, guys. So you got to talk about the clear and obvious political persecutions against Trump. But this time on the financial side, because like I told you guys, they're trying to attack Trump from all sides, okay, when it comes to his reputation, when it comes to uh, allowing him to run for office again, when it comes to uh, trying to make him out to be a criminal, when it comes to finances, yeah, they're attacking him from all fronts, okay, they're, they're trying to destroy the man, okay, because he stood up against the establishment, it's really that simple, okay, it's really that simple. And on the financial side, we got to talk about Letitia James, the tyrant out of New York, attorney general, who has bought this unprecedented case against Trump to try to bankrupt him financially, okay? This business uh, fraud case in which nobody was an actual victim, okay? The bank got paid back, uh, although Trump allegedly overvalued his assets. We've never seen anything like this before in regards to the fine that was levied against Trump, the $464 million judgment that Trump now has to pay, okay? He has to come up with this money very quickly soon by Monday or else he is at risk of having his assets seized by the attorney general, okay? And she's prepared to go to court to do so, at least according to her, in what would be something that is unprecedented, okay? You have the state being weaponized to seize the assets of their political opponents because of politics that they disagree with in a judgment that probably will be ruled unconstitutional if it makes it all the way up to the Supreme Court. Now, again, the reason why this is a big deal, okay, because the clock is ticking, okay, and Trump has to put up this money. Now, you guys got to keep in mind that Trump is a real estate investor, and when you are in real estate, a lot of your assets are not liquid, okay? These are fixed assets that just can't be sold very quickly, so he has to come up with the cash, okay, because he may not necessarily have the cash on hand to uh, pay the judgment. He actually has to, to, to pay the judgment in order to, to appeal, which, again, is just is, is crazy, right? It's nonsense. Uh, that he has to put up the money before he can even appeal it. But that's what he has to do, okay? And up until now, uh, he is having some issues coming up with the cash. Well, I would not count Trump out yet. He has a week yet to uh, actually ha have this uh, money secured in order to file the appeal. He's now seeking the court's approval to effectively take either $100 million in bond or to forgive the bond entirely at this point to allow the appeal to proceed. That's the next step is he wants to appeal this. But even if the court doesn't allow that and, and, uh, and James actually does try to foreclose on some of his properties, I think he still has paths to move forward through federal court, ultimately to the Supreme court to complain about eighth amendment violations the fine being so astronomically high here that it seems uh, un unbelievable for the constitution to permit it under these circumstances yeah i mean it, it seems it seems unjust that you could be forced to sell properties before you get the opportunity especially given the enormous size of this unprecedented uh, individual judgment 
that you have to sell the properties, then you'd have to buy them back, I guess, if you if your appeal is heard and you get restitution. That does seem uh, very unusual to have to essentially d disgorge yourself of everything that you're still fighting for through the appellate channel. The problem is that people who do that may try to use the court system to just delay their payment of the uh, of whatever fine they had gotten if they lose on appeal. But here, Trump has the assets. They're in different forms. They're not in a form that the that these bond companies. He said he went through 30 different bond companies that just won't put up that money based on it being property, real property, as opposed to being. Being held in cash. So I, I think that these are very unique circumstances. I think, and I hope that the New York Court uh, of Appeals looks at it appropriately. But like I said, I think even the Supreme Court would have interest in this case from that Eighth Amendment ground. Yeah, so you see now you heard that, okay? What you have there, okay, is just another example of what seems to be cruel and unusual punishment, okay? We're talking about potential Eighth Amendment violations because, I mean, they're just laying down a hammer against Trump. I mean, like, think about it, okay? They issue an $83 million judgment against Trump for the E. Jean Carroll case, okay, a, a case that, again, is ridiculous in and of itself. I mean, we're talking about allegations that uh, go back almost 30 years, okay, uh, and you have this business fraud case in which there was no real victim. Nobody was really hurt, okay? Uh, the banks knew what they were doing when they loaned Trump money. Uh, they knew that Trump would be able to pay it back. They liked what they saw from Trump. Uh, again, there was no victim, but yet this guy has to pay almost half a billion dollars okay and it appears as if trump is having some liquidity issues which is understandable because you're in real estate right so liquidity could be an issue okay when you have to all of a sudden put up this amount of money so he could be forced into a situation where he has to sell assets that you know for trump are iconic okay he has to sell his iconic assets to come up with this money and then if he ends up winning how does he get those assets back Right. When we talk about restitution again, there's a whole lot of questions here. OK, in regards to how this can work. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, real estate investor Kevin O'Leary is continuing to go off in the mainstream liberal media about what is happening to Trump because he sees the writing on the wall as a business person in regards to what this means for a state like New York to go full blown communist. Right. When it comes to going after their political opponents. And he got in this very heated exchange with a CNN host over what's happening to Trump. And I want to uh, talk about it because this exchange tells you everything you need to know about the difference between how a businessman thinks about what's happening versus how political propagandists think about what's happening. So let's get into it. We are prepared to make sure that the judgment is paid to New Yorkers. And yes, I look at 40 Wall Street each and every day. If he does not have funds uh, to pay off the judgment, uh, then we will seek, uh, you know, judgment enforcement mechanisms in court, and we will ask the judge to seize his assets. Now you take, you know, what a despicable woman, right? What a despicable woman. Okay. I mean, these, 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 I'm going to get in a whole nother rant. Let me stop. An issue with this, of course, more broadly in terms of what it means to be in an American business structure, Kevin, but in terms of the valuation, can you be clear as to why, I mean, why would the properties not be sufficient collateral? What a great message to send out all around the world. Take a claim where there was no monies lost. A fr there, was no, there was no fraud here in the context of actually people losing money. Deutsche Bank, who made the loan, was made whole. And let's make a penalty of half a billion dollars against a, a, a crime, apparently, where no monies were lost. Great message for New York. Great message for America. Bring your capital because we'll protect your property. I think that was a statement that would be much better made sometime in Venezuela. I'm not kidding. That's a scary, scary message. And by the way, there are uh, again, no such thing as half a billion to dollar bonds. The marketplace. There are no half a billion dollar bonds. Never been done before. Never. This law has never been applied. Forget about Trump. Nothing to do with Trump. Everything to do about America and the New York brand. I love this state. My children live here. A horrible message to everybody around the world watching this. 
absolutely horrific. Well, this wait, Kevin, Kevin, but, but hold on a second, Kevin. Trump what will be gone the, one day. Hold, this hold attorney on a general I, will be gone one day, and this I is what you want to tell people I have a wonderful voice, and it won't world. be talked this over. Hold, Kevin O'Leary, I would like to this hear you have to not say, but America. what are you doing? Not I, but, America. It, but it, it's not, not America, America, but it is the Laura Coates live show, and I am speaking. So again, the narcissism of these women, right? The narcissism of liberal black women. Let me just say it up front, okay? Because again, you got Letitia James, who's obviously a narcissist. You got Tiffany Henyer, who's obviously a narcissist. You have Fannie Willis, who's obviously a narcissist. You got this woman right here, obviously a narcissist. But she asked, well, what are you doing? Well, he's speaking, right? He's saying what he has to say about what is clearly and obviously an injustice. Something that scares a business owner who actually really seems to like the state of New York. He wants to do business in the state of New York, but he's frustrated by the business environment that is being created by uh, woke, deranged attorney generals like Letitia James, who is weaponizing the state to go out to her political opponents, okay? And these judges that are going along with this nonsense, right? He's concerned about the long-term impact of that. But see, here's the thing, Kevin, you have to let that go. You're going to have to let these liberal states go. We're going to have to let these liberal cities go. That, that is the conclusion I've come to. You can't help people who don't want to help themselves. If these people continue to vote for this type of nonsense, this type of bullshit, then let them deal with the consequences. You can't save Chicago. You can't save LA. You can't save San Francisco. You can't save o Oakland. You can't save Memphis. You can't save New York. You can't save these liberal cities. You can't. Because these people vote for this lunacy, right? So they have to suffer the consequences of it. We can have great American cities built in other places. In places that actually are going to be business friendly and aren't going to weaponize the state to go after their political opponents because they disagree with them politically. So yet they try to bankrupt them financially. And that, that's the message that's being sent here. The message that's being sent is that, yeah, this woman will weaponize the state to go after a business owner or a business that doesn't align with her politics. Trump is not the only person that she's doing this to. I covered a story uh, just a few weeks ago talking about how she's going after a meat company, a beef company, because they are not woke enough when it comes to the climate change agenda, right? Right? So again, she's setting precedents that she's abusing in order to go out to people that she disagrees with politically. And everybody can see the writing on the wall. And that's why a lot of these guys are afraid behind closed doors because they're like, okay, well, am I next, right? If I don't agree with Democrats, are they going to try to bankrupt me next? That's what Kevin O'Leary is coming from, right? And you, you need to let this man say his piece. Yes, it's your show, but he's your guest. And you should let your guest speak his piece especially when you're talking about business but it is a good question why isn't uh the collateral the real estate that trump is putting up why isn't it enough for him to secure the cash from some of these uh th these companies that he's trying to get the cash from it's a good question it's a good question i mean although those properties are definitely not liquid um and it, it's going to take some time to sell them but at the same time i mean they are valuable properties so I don't get it. Oh, that will be the rule, not Venezuela, not nowhere else. Fine, but it's Laura Coates Live. And hello, my name is Laura Coates. The question I want wow. to ask you on this point, though, is what does the reverse say, Kevin, if they do not take action? And I, I hear your point about you believe there's no fraud and that everyone was made whole, but a judge found otherwise. And so given that, Catherine, to Kevin's point, can you address what your opinion is on the issue? Because your big major concern seems to be what happens if this is not followed through by James or the courts? What message would that sound? You seem to think that's, that's anti-American. Yeah, look, I'm surprised that Kevin is wasting his good name defending fraud and lies, which I am convinced, Kevin, you have not committed. Uh, I don't understand why are you defending wow. uh, the actions of someone who has committed these actions. Uh, that, again, there is ample, 
ample evidence that he has done this. And the idea that just because, you know, the, the banks themselves uh, may have been in on the fraud uh, doesn't necessarily make it any better. I mean, yeah, so that person me is a columnist, an opinion writer for The Washington Post. She's not a businesswoman. She doesn't do business. She doesn't have as many assets or as much money as Trump or Kevin O'Leary or all the other business owners that have come out and spoke against this because I've done multiple news stories about business owners that have come out and said, yeah, I'm worried about this. This is not good. Okay, so yeah, of course, you're not going to understand it because, again, you're a political propagandist. You want to see something like this happen. The question is not about whether or not there should be some form of punishment. It's about the fact that this punishment is so cruel and unusual that, again, we're talking about it potentially being unconstitutional. Okay, we've never seen a half a billion dollar bond. That's insane. Absolutely insane. Now, it's one thing if they said, okay, well, we're going to give you a, a, a $10 million fine or a $20 million fine. I think a lot of people will say, you know, I don't necessarily agree with it, but hey, it's not excessive. It is what it is. Not that big of a deal. But half a billion? Yeah, somebody like Kevin O'Leary, if you're a business owner, you should look at it. You should be scared to death, especially, again, if you're in real estate. Because just because it's happening to Trump doesn't mean it can't happen to anybody else. And again, th that is the mistake a lot of people make when they see this type of stuff. Oh, well, it it's just Trump. They're just doing it to Trump. It will stop at Trump. No, it doesn't stop at Trump. No, you open up Pandora's box with Trump. It doesn't just stop at Trump. They use it for others as well, too. Okay? And that's the real takeaway here. That's why Kevin O'Leary is so frustrated. I don't think that Kevin O'Leary is necessarily a fan of Trump. I think he's probably indifferent about Trump. I think what he's really worried about is, again, the message that is being sent, the precedent that is being set, the fact that our country is turning into what we claim that we don't want to be, right? We're turning into Russia, right? We're turning into Venezuela. We're turning into China where the state can just, again, seize your assets if you don't agree with the agenda of the powers that be, the politics of the powers that be. And that's the real message that's being sent here, and it's scaring people. And normal, everyday people are seeing it. They're seeing it, and that's why I think ultimately at the end of the day, this is going to backfire in multiple ways. In multiple ways. I hope that this ultimately gets shot down if it goes up to the Supreme Court, okay? Or put it this way, I hope he can appeal it and it gets shot down there. I hope it doesn't have to go all the way to the Supreme Court. But when it comes to the voters and what people are saying, what they're doing to this man, yeah, I hope people say, you know what, I might not like Trump, but what he, what they're doing to him is wrong. And I don't want to live in a country where this is what they do to people who they disagree with politically. I need to vote for this man. I need to put this man in office just simply because if we don't, then we're going to be opening up the door for this to become the norm. And once that happens, we've officially become a banana republic. So, hey, let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.